Manginasal, the second biggest fast food chain in the Philippines. I'm particularly excited to tell you guys about Manginasal's story because of how remarkable it is for a brand that started out in a small city ended up dominating the entire country. Odds were against it considering that the category it entered was highly saturated with existing competitors. But it became so big that it even reached the point when the biggest fast food chain in the country, Jollibee, felt threatened enough to acquire it at a premium price. So in this episode, we're going to discuss Manginasal's meteoric rise and how its founder, Injapsia, started it all. Manginasal's founder is Edgar Injapsia II. I'll be referring to him as Injapsia in this episode. Apparently, his name Injap comes from the lineage of his parents. You see, Edgar Sr., his father, is half Chinese, or Inchik as we call it, while his mother, whose name is Paz, she's half Japanese. So, take the In from Inchik and combine it with a Jap from Japanese and we get Injap. Injapsia was born in 1977 in Iloilo City, but he grew up in Roja City, only a three-hour road trip away. When he was 10 years old, as soon as he got back home from school, he would help out in the family business. His family owns and runs a grocery store in Roja City, and so since everyone in the family had roles, and since he's still quite young, his role was to stack merchandise and man the counter. Normally, once you arrive home from school, it's usually playtime, which is what Injapsia's friends would be doing. Instead, quoting from Injap, I would be moving inventory and counting soap. Injap gives credit to how this experience was formative. It kind of became a training ground that molded him into having the mindset of being driven to succeed. He was already primed to be involved in the field of business, and we see this becoming a reality as he starts a couple of business ventures while still at a young age. We fast forward to when Injap was in college. Injap studied architecture in the University of San Agustin in Iloilo City. While he was in university, his mind was already wandering elsewhere. And so, at the age of 19, he dropped out of the university. One of the first businesses that he would put up was a 58-room, 5-story budget hotel known as the People's Hotel, which is currently a 3-star hotel. Along with his group of friends, they were able to borrow 40 million pesos, that's around 770,000 US dollars. They borrowed the money from their parents and from a government pension fund. They needed this money to buy the land and to have the hotel constructed. I'm sure you're feeling what I felt when I first learned about how they were able to get this much money for a project this big at the age of 20, since this seems quite a massive project for a bunch of 20-year-olds. And we're not alone, because Injip did share that when they were in the process of acquiring the property, the landowner himself didn't really take him seriously, and so he needed to do something unusual. In order for him to be taken seriously by older businessmen, he grew a mustache to make himself look older. And I guess it helped since it all eventually went smoothly. In fact, the hotel, named the People's Hotel, is still running to this day. The People's Hotel would be Injapsia's first business venture. Of course, it didn't stop there. After the hotel, Injap would then launch another business, Mr. Labada, a laundromat business. Nowadays, there are laundromats in almost every corner of the city, which makes this business seem ordinary. But when Mr. Labada was in its prime, it was actually one of the first laundromats in Iloilo City. Launching this business solved a consumer need, which is what his next move did as well. He launched the Injap Photo Express, a photo developing store back when developing photos from Kodak cameras were still a thing. He'd still be very young at this point, but it seems like he already knew what he was doing. Injap actually mentioned that one of the ways that he was able to gain an edge in starting and managing his businesses was to hang out with the seniors. These were older entrepreneurs who has had years more of experience in business. Safe to say that at this point, Injap has become a fairly successful entrepreneur from these businesses he has put up. It's an impressive streak, but none of them would even come close to what's about to come. In December of 2003, an opportunity came along. He'd be 26 years old at this point. An offer comes along that Injapsia couldn't refuse. He was offered a 250 square meter space at the car park of Robinson's Place Iloilo at a very attractive price. Overhead costs were so low that it lessened the risk significantly, which made it difficult for him to say no to the offer. This location is quite big, but I wouldn't say that it's the most prime location you could get at the mall since it's on the car park building of the mall. So it's not like it's right in the center of the mall. It's still a good location, but I wouldn't give the location as much credit as I'd give to the quality of the product. 
And I'm not exaggerating with the offer he couldn't refuse statement because Injepsia said it himself, and I could. The price was so attractive that I couldn't forgo it, even if I had no business plan in mind. I bought the space not knowing what to do with it. You can say that the space came ahead of the concept. I guess after years of experience in helping out in the family grocery business and his other ventures, one thing you start to develop is some sort of sixth sense. A voice in your head that gives you the this feels right type of feeling when you're about to make a decision. At this point, little did he know that this is where it all starts. Now that they have this location, they started getting to work on what business to launch. Injepsio was trying to figure out what to launch that could benefit most from this location. As he was brainstorming on what product to sell, he had one important filter that sorted out the good ideas from the bad ones. He wanted the concept to have the potential to grow and expand on a nationwide scale. I like this tidbit since it gives us a glimpse into his decision-making process, something that many of us may overlook. According to Naval, a Silicon Valley investor, sometimes running a small business and running a billion-dollar company may take the same amount of work. They may need to work the same number of hours each day and both may be focused and obsessed about their own businesses. The difference is, on the one hand, there's a guy or girl with a couple local restaurant chains that are doing well. And on the other hand, there's Elon Musk running a 40 billion company that's changing the automotive landscape. It's a good lesson to apply the next time you're thinking of what company to start. It means that you should aim for something big because sometimes it takes the same amount of work and might require the same levels of sacrifice. This is one of Injup's determining factors that narrowed down the possible products he should sell. Now, during this process, Injepsio did his own research. There are 16 regions in the Philippines. They're all a part of one country. But each region has differences in terms of culinary traditions, eating habits, and preferences as to what type of food they love. The question in his mind was, despite their differences, what product can all Filipinos from different regions unanimously love? What product had the potential to reach every single Filipino? With this in mind, it all narrowed down to barbecue chicken or inasal. But why? Well, first, inasal is affordable. This is important because the purchasing power of Filipinos is not that high. So in order for a product to be accessible, it had to be affordable. Next, inasal is something you can eat every single day because it's basically grilled chicken, which is a healthier choice. Third, inasal is easy to make. The magic of barbecue chicken all boils down to the freshness of the chicken and the spices in the marinade. The simplicity and affordability of barbecue chicken is one of the reasons why majority of Filipinos love it. And lastly, he had to consider competition. Jollibee and McDonald's were dominating the fast food segment. Chowking was dominating the Chinese fast food segment and Greenwich was leading the pizza category. But in the chicken barbecue space, it was still up for grabs. He also mentioned that Jollibee, Chow King, Greenwich, McDonald's, and KFC were around since the 1970s and the 1980s, yet none of them bothered to explore the category. And so with this, Injepsia saw the opportunity and decided to pursue it. He was gonna enter and win the chicken barbecue category. So now, he had the idea. The next thing he needed to do was to get capital. Injepsia asked his father for his startup capital. He didn't agree at first, but after a bit of persuading, Injepsia was able to borrow 2.4 million pesos as capital. And now he can proceed to the next step, which is to come up with a brand name. For the brand name, Injepsia proposed to use the name Mang Inasal. Inasal is a Hiligaynon term for barbecue. Hiligaynon is the local dialect in Iloilo City, Philippines. And so if translated, Mang Inasal just means Mr. Barbecue. However, his dad preferred a shorter version of the name, basically just removing the letter A from the word mang, which is still bang in asal, but with the mang part spelled as M-N-G. His father pointed out that it was a feng shui thing, since both Chow King and Jollibee had eight letters in their name. Both, of course, are incredibly successful fast food giants. Injepsia actually almost relented and was about to go with a shorter version until he pointed out Banco de Oro, which had 10 letters and is also wildly successful as being one of the biggest banks in the Philippines. His dad gave in and it was decided, Manginasal it was, and so it begins. My name is Chris and I'll be back next week for another episode. 
If you enjoyed this show, it will mean a lot if you can tell your friends about Brand Fever. You can also talk to us on Twitter. We're at Brand Fever. If you prefer the podcast version of this episode, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on your favorite podcast app. Once again, thanks for watching another episode of Brand Fever.